Reducing carbon emissions in the shipping industry is a critical step in ensuring we achieve a cleaner, greener ocean environment. Lloyd's Register is working to help steer ocean governance and sustainability with the emergence of new technologies and policies. Donna Bernard travelled to Southampton to find out more. It's the international leader in transporting goods around the world and now shipping must chart a course to reduce greenhouse gases. Lloyd's Register has a key role in guiding the industry to a greener future. We're really delighted to be part of the Global Maritime Forum. We're a strategic partner and we're also on the advisory board as well as providing expertise into the various work streams that they're running. Since the Paris Agreement a couple of years ago, that set the ambition of a pathway of well below 2 degrees C whilst aiming for 1.5 degrees C. And shipping has um, its an obligation and has to do its fair share just like everyone else. The International Maritime Organisation, or IMO, has set ambitious targets for shipping to halve emissions by 2050 compared to 2008 levels, eventually aiming to get rid of them altogether. It is feasible. Um, ultimately, reaching that goal does mean moving away from fossil-based fuels. It's now a matter of urgency. If shipping was a country, it would rank sixth in the world for greenhouse gas emissions. The industry accounts for two to three percent of emissions currently, and without action, it could end up multiplying them by up to 250 percent. With each vessel having a typical lifespan of around 25 years, the new technology going into the designs of today has to meet the long-term goals of tomorrow. Lloyd's Register is leading research on a sustainable future. Its study, Zero Emission Vessels Transition Pathways, was produced with the University Maritime Advisory Service, or UMAS, and it underlines the need for shipping to ramp up decarbonisation. Our expertise is built up on modelling and simulations, but also the use of big data and uh, the knowledge of all the policy around that can influence the shipping industry. Um, and we, we found very useful to collaborate with Lloyds because they can bring all their technical specification as well. We are very keen to collaborate with all the wider stakeholders. We think that this will bring the solution to these big challenges. Decarbonized shipping is not only the ship owners, but it's the fuel suppliers, it's the different company that works around the shipping industries. Meeting the challenge of decarbonization means the shipping industry has to weigh up technical, operational and investment challenges. In order to achieve the IMO's targets for 2050, it's crucial that zero emission vessels start entering the fleet in 2030. This next decade is absolutely critical. Practical considerations include how to ensure a high percentage of new builds are zero emission vessels to compensate for the current fleet. The importance of infrastructure cannot be underestimated. If we look where investment is needed in the short term, the investment is needed in the upstream and the supply and distribution of zero carbon fuels. The company is in the early stages of looking at the design of zero emission vessels. We've done a small ferry in Belgium that is running on hydrogen. We were also the first classification society to deliver a methanol fueled Ropex vessel for Stena, so the Stena Germanica. So um, we've got a lot of firsts. As part of the Global Maritime Forum, Lloyd's Register has been involved with the Getting to Zero Coalition for Decarbonisation and the development of financial guidelines known as the Poseidon Principles. And particularly they're looking at how lending decisions can lead to cleaner oceans, looking at how we measure the data, looking at how we can establish benchmarks and looking at how that fundamentally changes all the technology investment decisions. The only way I think that we're going to get um, to, to quicker uh, and, and more, call it more sustainable solutions in a way, um, but more valuable solutions is actually to work together with others. We need innovation, um, we need new thinking, new ideas. Technology and digitalisation will unite to make fleet management more efficient with performance monitored in real time. I think that allows a lot better management of the system which ultimately allows you to lower the carbon. So if we think about sustainability, for us, safer oceans leads to a safer world.
but I think we're all on a journey together at the moment. Nobody's got the perfect blueprint, the perfect answer. Everybody's got to work together to say, what can I do? There's opportunities of shaping the future and shaping our own destiny. The shipping sector has really stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm.